We had some drama in the Padres and Yankees game. Anthony Rizzo was not happy with Fernando Tatis Jr. The Astros' Twitter account also stirred the pot a little bit. Fans were calling them classless, so we'll talk about that later on. Michael Harris, he saved Spencer Strider. He almost gave up a home run, but he flew out of nowhere to make that grab. And Strider, he made some MLB history yesterday. All of that in today's MLB Recap, a series where we recap every single game, every single day. And before we get into the actual games, thank you so much to all the veterans who are currently watching. We appreciate your service. It's Memorial Day, so I had to mention that. There were a ton of walk-off victories from yesterday, and the first one came in the Mariners and the Pirates game. J-Rod, he came into this one with a six-game hitting streak, and he makes it a seven-game hitting streak. He's so back. He's hitting 321 with eight extra base hits over the last two weeks. Cal Raleigh, he sent one over the right field wall for his eighth home run, and Jared Kelnick made it three runs on the day for Seattle, who needed every single one of those runs. Brian Reynolds, he tripled home Andrew McCutcheon to bring it within one, and he uses his legs yet again to score on a wild pitch from Paul Seawald. G1 Bay, look at that catch in center field. He robs the Mariners of an extra base hit and it has to go to extras where Taylor Saucedo, I think that's how you pronounce his name, he struck out three hitters in the 10th inning to give his team a chance at walking it off and A. Eugenio Suarez, he cashed in that check. He knocks an RBI's 32, 33, and 34 on that walk-off three-run home run against the Pirates. The Mariners will be back in third place if the Halos take an L later, so stay tuned for the Angels game. Akil Badu, Meet baseball. That is a grand slam pimp job for the bad man. He has three home runs and 12 RBIs to go along with the near 500 on base percentage over his last 10 starts. Now we're going to fast forward to the eighth inning when Riley Green, he robs Jake Berger. What might have been, nah, I'm going to just say that was a double. I don't think they had enough distance for a full-blown home run. Probably just a double, but still an insane catch nonetheless. As you can see though, Chicago actually stole the lead but lost it after Tim Anderson bobbled what would have been a play at the plate. This one's also going to go to extra innings where Eric Haas lifted a fly ball and the Tigers walk it off. They're playing much better as of late and they're just one game back or they're going to be one game back of the Twins if the Jays can beat Minnesota later on. Here we go. The Cardinals at the Guardians. Josh Bell singled in the game's first run for either squad and it stayed pretty quiet until St. Louis exploded for a three home run inning. The third home run came off the bat of the reigning NL MVP Paul Goldschmidt. Now the Guardians do fight back a little bit. Stephen Kwan got one of those runs back on an RBI double in the fifth inning but man that that one hurts. St. Louis turned a huge double play in the eighth inning. They keep their lead intact. So Cleveland is going to have to have their captain step up and Jose J. Ram, he delivers. He's having a down season for J. Ram standards. He only has a 127 OPS plus, which is the lowest since 2019. The Guardians take the series and improve to 23 and 29. So they're still six games under 500. They also need the Twins to lose. The Nationals and the Royals. Mackenzie Gore was given an early lead and he was shredding on the bump against Kansas City. He struck out 11 Royals hitters, allowing just three hits on the day. And one of those hits, and the only run that he allowed, came on that 420-foot Oppo Taco from MJ Melendez. It is not easy to hit a baseball that far the other way. And good Lord, Edward Olivares, 455 feet. He broke the scoreboard, and he tied the ball game in the process. Michael Massey, can he do it? Yes, he can. That was the fourth walk-off of yesterday's contest, and also it's the final one as the Royals walk off the Nationals 3-2. This was an absolutely insane game, so bear with me because we're not going to talk about every single play and every single RBI, but Isak Peretta singled home Wander Franco in the first, and Isak ended up with four RBIs after a two-run double in the second, and also a solo shot in the fourth inning. It's now 10-8 Rays when former Dodger Luke Rayley robbed Austin Barnes of extra base hits to end the fifth inning. I kind of felt bad for Josh Fleming. The Tampa Bay Rays said, hey, you're going to go out there and you're going to pitch six innings no matter what. He had back-to-back -back home runs later on. I think that was the second time in that game the Dodgers went back-to-back. -back. That was courtesy of J.D. Martinez and Chris Taylor. That back-to-back -back ties it at 10 runs apiece and Josh Fleming allowed five on the day. Wander Franco, he grounded out in the seventh to put the Rays up by one and Jason Adam, he took over from there. He came in for two innings. He got all six outs. He has seven saves on the year. The Rays win by one single run, 11-10 in a battle for the ages. Wait, we have Back-to-back 11-10 -back to 10 games. All right, let's just get into it. We have a battle of the Mets and the Rockies in Coors Field. This Alvarez kid is really feeling himself as of late. And that bat is no joke. That three-run 420-foot home run was his eighth of the season. He's now hitting 310 with seven home runs and 17 RBIs with a 1088 OPS in the month of May. He's going to get a player of the month card in MLB The Show if you guys play that game. Marte, he couldn't get to a fly ball from Ryan McMahon, so that turns into a base-clearing three-run triple. 
but McMahon, he wasn't done yet. After Colorado tied and took the lead on some doubles from Randall Gritchick and catcher Austin wins, Chuck Nasty went boom. Chuck Nasty, Charlie Blackman has 20 extra base hits, 23 RBIs, and a 115 OPS plus. I kind of hope that he gets traded because I want to see him in the playoffs. Ryan McMahon is more known for his glove, but he has been on a tear offensively as of late. 10 RBIs over his last seven games. The Mets, they tried their best to fight back, but they do lose 10 to 11. Here we go, the final game between the Padres and the Yankees in Yankee Stadium. Back tightness put Juan Soto on the bench in this one, and it makes sense considering his back has to be hurting. He's put the offense on his back the last three weeks. He's got to be just sore from that. Aaron Judge, he got the scoring started with his 15th home run to tie at one run apiece. And after the Yankees controller died, I'm just going to show this and not really say anything because it was one of the worst defensive plays I have ever seen. Two run score on that little league inside the park home run to Azokar. The Yankees got three RBI singles from Anthony Volpe, Aaron Judge, and Anthony Rizzo. They grabbed their first lead of the game, and it would have been more, but Trent Grisham, he looked like Spider-Man out there in perfect timing because we know that Spider-Verse is coming out, I think, on the first or second. The Yankees got up to eight runs before the third came to a close when some drama happened at first base in the sixth inning. There was a back pick at first base, Tatis. Apparently, fans were not happy that he did not slide. I mean, Anthony Rizzo, I, mean, I don't think that this was a bad or malicious play. It just seemed like a baseball play. Maybe you're making the case that Tatis should have slid, and that's why Rizzo got hurt and that's why he was offended. I don't know, but it seemed like a very normal baseball play to me. And I don't think that Tatis was trying to hurt anyone. But if you think that's glazing, I don't know, maybe you just don't know sports because that was very normal to me. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Garrett Cole, he was awful. Just going to put that out there. The Yankees win after Harrison Bader bashed his sixth home run of the year. The Yankees win the series over the Padres. The Yankees are trying to keep pace with the Baltimore Orioles, who are also trying to keep pace with the Rangers for the second best record in the AL. I think whoever wins this game will be in sole possession of the second best right behind the Tampa Bay Rays. Austin Hayes, he has been playing like an all-star. That RBI single was Baltimore's first of two runs in the first, both for Kyle Bradish, who was nasty. He's so, so underrated. He held the Rangers to one run over nearly seven innings, and there's Austin Hayes again. He's hitting 354 over his last 12 starts, and Felix Bautista, the mountain, he turned in one of the most dominant innings of any relief pitcher this year. He strikes out the side. He's been so nasty ever since the Orioles traded away Jorge Lopez and made Bautista their closing pitcher. In fact, he's been better than Jorge Lopez. The Orioles win 3-2. to Alright, so we're going to have some drama at the very end of this game, but uh, we're going to start this with a little goodbye baseball. Jordan Alvarez, he sent that one to outer space. And look at rookie Ryan Noda. Him and Jordan both connected on first inning home runs. And I got to give a little bit of a shout out to Ryan Noda, the rookie A's first baseman. He has 17 extra base hits and a 145 OPS+. plus. He's got 33 walks already and a 400 on base percentage. That guy is really, really good at baseball. Jake Myers, go off, bro. A three-run home run. Then you have Chaz McCormick and Jose Altuve going back to back. Jose Abreu, his first home run of 2023. I cannot believe I'm saying that out loud, but he was excited. So he was sprinting around like a little kid. He slides in by his dugout. He was just having a great time. Pena goes yard. The sixth home run of the day for the Astros. Make it seven. Jordan blasted off for a second of the game. That's when Twitter went viral. The Astros Twitter account mocked the A's and their attendance. They were basically saying that the A's attendance has been terrible all season long. And a lot of people took offense to this because it's not like the A's don't want to go watch baseball. It's the fact that John Fisher, the owner of the A's, has done everything possible to make sure that the A's are the worst team in baseball history. The ballpark is as bad as it can possibly get. It's not a lot of fun to go. So I thought this was a low dig, but then again, this reminded me of a Call of Duty lobby back in Modern Warfare 2. Maybe the gloves are off between the Astros and the A's. The Marlins and the Angels. The Halos are trying to avoid getting swept by the Marlins, and they had a lefty on the bump, which is not good news because they had to face the lefty killer, Jorge Soler. But look at that web gem. A little behind the back grab for Patrick Sandoval. And then he makes another great play later on to rob Gene Segura. And oh boy, that one's not coming back. Nick Fortes belts his third home run of the year. He's a pretty decent athlete for being a catcher. He put rookie Yuri Perez in line for the win. And the kid was nasty. Yuri, he's still just... 20 years old. He tossed five shutout with a few strikeouts. Once he gets the walks in check, it's going to be really tough to get anything going off of that guy. Gene Segura, he laced one the other way for an RBI single and he threw his bat to the stratosphere. He's hitting 198 on the season with a negative 1.3 war. So he was not trying to be disrespectful. He was more of like, finally, I got a base hit. I didn't suck for once. Mike Trout, he had a chance. 
but uh, that's a wrap. The Halos get swept. They lose two to nothing in the final game against the Marlins. Here we go, the Blue Jays and the Minnesota Twins. The 2022 Gold Glover at first base, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. He saves his pitcher, Jose Barrios, in the first inning. He dove to rob Minnesota of a run. And then there was a little bloopy from Kirk to put Barrios on top. Barrios, he walked five, but somehow he worked around those freebies to deliver five strikeouts over five and two thirds shutout frames. Jays fans, they will definitely take his 3.86 ERA as long as it's not in the fives like it was last year. Again, they're happy. Bo Bichette, he had a single in the eighth inning, and Willie Castro gave Toronto another run to work with. He just olayed it, completely missed it. By the way, Bo Bichette now has 23 multi-hit games. That is most in baseball by far. Now, we have some deja vu because Correa sends one deep. Our show goes to the exact same spot in which Willie Castro hit one directly to him and it bounced off of his glove for a home run, but he makes that grab. Shout out to him. j Ro, I don't know if they call him that or not, but Jordan Romano, he has been really good this year. Another save as the Jays went three to nothing. Ronald got on for Matt Olson, and I'm telling you, the combination of Ronald getting on base for Matt Olson, it's just, it turns him into an RBI machine. He has 15 home runs and 39 RBIs. Austin Riley, this is a scary sentence. Not only does he go back to back with Matt Olson, but the slump is over. He's hitting 330 with 10 extra base hits over his last 13 games. The Braves hit around as Albies and Acuna both had two run singles to finish off that inning. Look at Michael Harris. That glove does not slump. He saves Spencer Strider. And speaking of Spencer Strider, that strikeout of Nick Castellanos in the fourth was his 100th strikeout of the season already. Quickest to 100 strikeouts for a starting pitcher since 1893 or something crazy like that. Ronald, he had four. Four base hits on the day, one being an RBI three-bagger, and Matt Olson, he now has 16 home runs and 41 RBIs. The Phillies get embarrassed. They lose 11 to four. Here we go. We have Cincinnati facing off against the Cubs, I think in Chicago. Cincy, they went up by two, but I'm going to show this next sequence of events real quick because Patrick Wisdom, he said he got hit by the pitch, but it was actually a foul ball. It went off the knob of the bat, and good thing that it did, though, because he got a second chance, and he made that baseball pay. 430 feet on that three-run tater. Now, the Reds do storm back with an RBI double from rookie Matt McLean. That guy is really good, by the way. More run support came later on the fifth as TJ Friedel snatched the lead back on an RBI double of his own. And there he is again, Spencer Steer. He has been a glitch for a while now. He's hitting 386 with eight extra base hits and 10 RBIs to go along with 22 hits over his last 13 games. He's been a hit machine. Senzel wanted in on the RBI extra base hit party. He makes it eight runs, but I do want to show Patrick Wisdom second of the day. He has 14 home runs on the year. Alexis Diaz, shout out to this guy. Easy ninth inning. He strikes out the side. He has 12 saves and 40 strikeouts in 21 innings. The Diamondbacks and the Red Sox. Corbin Carroll was apparently hungry because he ordered himself an oppo taco. That was a terrible joke, but his stat line is stupid. Eight home runs and 14 stolen bases to go along with a near 140 OPS plus. Josh Rojas, his RBI single made it five consecutive hits for the Diamondbacks. Now we're going to go to the second inning real quick where Perdomo, he did some damage with no runners on. Almost every single one of his RBIs this year has come with runners and scoring position. Where was this Merrill Kelly in the World Baseball Classic? Can I interest you guys in 10 strikeouts? He now has a really good 2.83 ERA and an almost 10 strikeouts per nine on the season. Miguel Castro, I think the Mets are missing him right now. An easy ninth inning. He now has five saves on the year after striking out two more hitters. Arizona is 30 and 23, and they're one and a half games back of the Dodgers after the Rays beat the Dodgers yesterday. I'm just going to go ahead and spoil it right now. Milwaukee absolutely bodied the Giants in the first two innings of this contest, and it was pretty impressive considering it came off of Alex Cobb, who has been pretty good this season. William Contreras, he brought home Christian Yelich, and then Brian Anderson, he plates two more on a double to right. Owen Miller, he just won't stop hitting extra base hits. He's hitting 330 on the season with the 141 OPS plus. I don't think that he's going to be able to maintain it, but as a Guardians fan, I kind of miss him right now. William Contreras delivers again that time on a home run. He has 25 home runs over his last 137 games. That is crazy offensive production from a backstop. Tyrone Taylor makes a nice grab in the seven to rob wisely of extra base hits, which ended up being huge for Milwaukee because Milwaukee ended up getting out of the inning and no damage was done the rest of the day because they brought in Devin Williams. This guy is so nasty. He's eight for eight and save opportunities. He got six outs in this one against the Giants. The Brewers are back to one and a half games ahead of the Pirates for first place in the NL Central. So that does it for today's MLB recap. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and show these standings before we end this recap. But again, one more time, today is Memorial Day. So I wanted to say, again, my heart goes out to anyone affected. And I just want to say thank you for your service. If you are a veteran, it is greatly appreciated. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.